Jupiter Broadcasting presents this show in mega stereo sound. This episode brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show, we load the action cannon and prepare to launch our full Fedora 15 review. Is this going to be a brutal slaughter or the beginning of desktop Linux's near perfection? Tune in to find out. Then, why the next major version of the Linux kernel might be just around the corner. Plus so much more, all this week on the Linux Action Show! And welcome to the Linux Action Show Season 17, Episode Uno. My name is Brian. That guy over there in the amazing striped shirt is Chris. Hey there, Brian. Check out the Evo 2. No, it's not a cell phone, B-Man. Shut your dumb face. I didn't want it to be one. No, sir. It's Envision's Evo 2 game console, and it runs Linux. Kinda. It's actually an Android device, so I cheat a little bit on these ones, to be honest with you. So it's an it's an Android gaming console. It is, dude. It's uh, they've actually they had the Ev- they had a different. I don't know if it was actually called the Evo, but uh, check this thing out. It's gonna it's gonna go for two hundred and fifty dollars okay. with an open developer edition for one hundred and fifty dollars. The Evo two cloud console runs a modified version of Android two point two, a Samsung one point two gigahertz processor. Cloud and, console? I don't know, man. And five hundred twelve megs of RAM. I know they're going to do digital distribution of titles. So maybe that's where the cloud crap comes in. Okay, okay. So you can buy apps from like the Android marketplace to play games. I mean, that that are built to work with a controller. I would imagine so, yeah. Are there actually games no, for no, this? No, come on. When is this supposed to come out? Come on, Brian. It's actually in uh, the early uh, t- test models are getting ready for shipping, so I oh. think pretty soon. Oh, but yeah, I mean, theoretically, though, the developers can Says get behind it. Says that it'll it. be uh, mass shipping in the fall for $250. 250 US dollars. So I... You know, I mean, for at two hundred fifty dollars, you could get a you could get a Nintendo Wii, and then you could you could do homebrew Linux on that. I mean, you know, right? Yeah. I don't think I dropped two fifty for this thing. For maybe one fifty. Maybe one fifty to play yeah, with to, it uh, to tinker with as a toy. But I don't know. But if you're gonna get Android, I mean, the whole point of that is that it's mobile. I mean, because Android's not really built to be this high performance, crazy next right? generation gaming console. Right? It's Java, man. I, no one ever says, although, man, man, you know it would be great. You know what? I I, I want to have the best gaming console ever. But here's the thing: all Java. No one, yeah, no, 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 no one's, one's ever gonna say that. that. No, no, you're right. I had a I had a 3D app here on this on this. I was really impressed with actually. You can do good games on on an Android. Phone. Yeah, you really can. Yeah. Um. So that's the Evo 2, though. I'll put a link to the show notes because it's kind of an interesting box. Huh. Um. They had an they had an AMD Athlon based uh, desktop PC that was kind of like a small Linux version. It was going to be the same thing. Now this one, instead of being based on on their own homebrew of Linux, it's uh, it's like it's you Android. Know, yeah, well, you get, um, get behind the winning team, I guess. You know, Android's getting a lot of market share. There's lots of Android apps and games. Why not? Sometimes you get you get buzz and you get coverage just because you go with a certain platform. Yep, that's yeah. what they're doing. Yeah, that's all right. Now, uh, good's enough on that, Brian. We should say we are doing the show a little early this week. We sure as heck are. We, uh, we're live Saturday night. We usually do these shows Sunday morning, but uh, we had some things come up on... You're doing like a graduation thing. i got to go to someone's graduation yeah. tomorrow, and, and, and that's just that's just not going to work when you have a graduation to go to. It's at the same time as you're trying to do a show. You can't do both at the same time. No, and that's when we get that cloning worked out. We're working on it, though. We're working on it. So we're a little early this week, so apologies if you weren't able to catch this episode live, but uh, we should be back at a regular time next week. Now, before we go on, I want to say holler over to GoDaddy.com. Which is a great point, because GoDaddy.com has got you covered. If you're looking to... Man, I can't even remember yeah, the actual you had words. Roll up. GoDaddy.com has got you if covered. If you're looking to make an impact online, GoDaddy.com has got what you need, or that's got what, you covered. Yeah, that's it. Domain name starting as low as $1.99, plus world-class hosting, fast and easy website builders, plus so much more. Plus, as a listener of the Linux Action Show, you can enter code Linux. That's L-I-N-U-X at checkout and save 10% off of your entire order, or Linux 2.0 and save 20% off of hosting. Man, I don't remember what no, the no, actual no. script was anymore, but no, I, think I think I got most of it. That's probably it, man. If there, it's was, not. there was plus something about um, yeah. the GoDaddy hosting connection. Connection. Yeah, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. There Fast and easy things. GoDaddy is awesome. I host my stuff over at GoDaddy. My blog is now over on GoDaddy. I've been, I've, I've been moving a lot of my domains over to GoDaddy because GoDaddy's got the, the shared hosting for like... Like six bucks a month, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. And you, so you can get it for like right now for like fifty bucks a year. Yeah. If you type in Linux Eco, yeah, uh, you got like L-I-N-U-X two days left to use that. Eco, really, 
try and use that. It's really good. What you get is you get the deluxe shared hosting for yeah. the price of the economy shared hosting. So I decided, you know what? Give it a shot. So my blog, Lendu.com, gets yep. a lot of traffic. Yeah, especially like, when you have the topic that's up there, at least as we record this right now. Uh, so, so <laughs> uh, I mean, I mean, I mean, it's not, I'm not getting a million hits a, a, a year or no, anything I mean, like that. You do get something popular. You like, want it to hold up. Like, let's say, like, I think it was like a Friday or Thursday. I got about 10,000, 10,000 unique visitors in a day. Yeah, you uh, want to just, you know. That's, it's enough that if you don't have a properly set up server it will take it down so concentrated in a single day like that so what i wanted to find out is is if i put this on a shared host how will it handle yeah. how will it be able to hold up so i put it over on godaddy hosting connection for like was it 50 some bucks for the a year yeah, for the year for an entire year yeah. i'm i'm currently putting it on a dedicated box yeah which is costing me like 120 bucks a month i know right and honestly the site's loading faster now and That's it's the thing. awesome. And I have, you have unlimited have bandwidth, yeah. which is great because I use a lot of it. And I've been really impressed. 50 some bucks a month, and I'm hosting a really, really high traffic site. There you go. Love it. There you go. Love it. Have nothing but good things to say about it now. Because we've been, we've been pimping it. Yeah. I felt bad. I wasn't using it. And we had some, you know, I had my domains hosted yep. there, sure. But I didn't, have, I didn't have a lot of my sites hosted there. I've done a few tricky things that I've liked <sighs> a lot using those cheap GoDaddy servers. They've come in extremely handy over the years. Uh, I've got a whole rash of android picks like yeah, it's just do. breaking out all over i want to just i'll bang through them starting with the one true genuine pick i mean i don't make it i don't mean to make it sound like they're not all genuine but the one i really really like is uh, it's called dropping and what it is is it lets you synchronize and by default it's your videos and your photos on your android phone over to uh, Dropbox. So, you know, you got your phone, you take a picture with it, right? Yep. And then you uh, you can either have this thing running all the time, but it, I don't, I don't want, I wouldn't recommend that. I just fire it up when I'm done, taking my photos for the day, hit this thing, it, you do sync now, sends them right to your Dropbox. Oh, that's cool. So, yeah, so you just don't have to worry about getting them off your, your phone. Can and all you that customize kind of stuff. it so it can send it to things other than Dropbox, or is it pretty tied to Dropbox? This one is tied to Dropbox, but there's a lot of different ones in here. Now, I, I went with this one because I'm still using Dropbox, although that could be changing. Yep. Uh, but, uh, the, you know, like, um, uh, what was Own Cloud? I think there's an early version of the Own Cloud client in oh, here, very or cool. an implementation of it yeah. at least. And I think uh, Spider Oak has a client in here. So, you know, there's a few different nice. options in there. So that's nice. drop in. Link in the show notes. Uh, I wanted to give an honorable mention to one that I've been having fun with all weekend, and it's free. So they're both free, actually, dropping in this one. Uh, do I still have it running? I mean, this is, uh, this is one of these apps that is really defining for the platform. Now, it's not a, it's not a uh, fart app. Oh, it's too quiet. That was too bad. It's a Charlie Sheen soundboard app. Let's <laughs> see how classy I am, man. That's, that's pretty great. Yeah. It's a turd that opens on a tugboat. I see you. See? Yeah, that's great. I'm an F-18, bro. I'm an F-18, <laughs> yeah, bro. I'm an F-18, bro. So that's the Charlie yeah. Sheen app, and uh, my last uh, fun one, Brian. Uh, Brian, this one, I don't know, I'm just, just putting this in. I know you don't have an Android phone, but I'm just, if you ever did, Brian, you might like this one. It's called GI Monitor, <laughs> and uh, it, it helps you uh, log your pooping and your eating. Wait, wait, it logs your pooping? Well, you see, you, if you have a bowel So movement, just to be clear, it logs your pooping. It does. It logs your logs. And it, it, it logs your meds, and it logs your meals, and uh, you can... Uh, you can track your stools per day, and it gives you kind of an overall average and lets you know if you're doing great or how you're doing. You see, it gives you a nice color bar <laughs> rating. <laughs> you let it know, man, you're doing a good job pooping today. And then if you had a, if you had a poop that didn't uh, go well, you could actually log its pain <laughs> level with the uh, wait, nice... go back. Go back to the next screen. Previous screen. There's, it says in there, urgency level. <laughs> Is that is that yeah. the urgency of, of how the badly? Of so, the like, pooping. if you really, if you're out and about, this application will let you log how badly you need to go right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, how bad you got to poop. It is really urgent right now. But and now it will be logged into Android, and it will be sent up to the hey cloud. Hey, man, some of us have, yeah, some of us have pooping issues. Check this out. What if your pooping hurts, man? <laughs> what I like is this nice pooping scale. Because how, how else would you know for sure that it that it hurt? Yeah, you see, so you can just log, and then I can go back, and it's historical data. Some of us with, uh, with bowel issues, that's Brian. Some, that's says right up the top, log pain level. Yeah. Yeah, that's fantastic. So some of us, I mean, might hey, need Chris, that. Hey, Chris, can I ask you a question? Huh? Are you, you using this app right now? No, I, I, this is not an app I've, I've personally tried, but I think I'll hey, keep it did on the you, radar. Did you install it? No, no, uh, but... Why, why oh, you know what? I might have actually. You, got, you have to install the apps. Well, I always do, except for Come in here. the case of the bonus picks. See, these are bonus picks. Although I did install the Charlie Sheen app. The main app I always try. The bon I'm going to classify this one as. Oh, I did. I, I lied. I installed it. Oh, beautiful. Oh, you, you have to register you with do, their website. You so do need to. They know you need to log in. You poop. Yeah. <laughs> you need to log in. This is taking the whole like tweet pooping Look, to a whole new in level. In fact, registration is required. If you don't, your only option is to either register or, or quit. quit. That's fantastic. <laughs>
<laughs> so, uh, because heaven, heaven forbid you have any privacy around pooping. Well, you just wanted to make sure that everything could be in the cloud. So. You know what? I could see Google getting into this next. You know, they've been talking about the whole getting the whole wallet thing yeah. going so they have all your money. I could see them also right. having how, how control over your pooping schedule. I don't... I, this was not a conscious thread, but first I got an app that helps you sync your photos. Yep. Then I got an app that's a soundboard for Charlie Sheen, and then I got a pooping app. And what do you do? You... Some people might take pictures of their pooping, and while they're sitting on the pot, they listen to the Charlie Sheen soundboard, and then they can log it in this GI monitor. You know, it's funny. I like to do the complete ecosystem I, for pooping. <laughs> my brain did not go there at all, because that sounds like the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Let's talk about the Linux pick. Okay, let's do the Linux pick. All right, right the Linux pick this week is an incredibly obvious one. Yeah, you gotta go with it, though. Now, I felt kind of weird picking Gedit, because honestly, a lot of us already have Gedit installed by default, because many of the GNOME distros ship with it by default. Sure. But a lot of you out there are not blessed enough to be running <laughs> Gedit by default. So there are some great editors out there, some great text editors for both KDE, for LXDE. There are great default editors all over the place. They're not Gedit, though. But they're not Gedit. Gedit is phenomenal. It is one of the best, fastest, tabbed text editing applications out there with some of the greatest highlighting options uh, available. It is absolutely a phenomenal it application. It really lives in that sweet spot of functionality, simplicity, and speed. Yes, it is perfect. It is a perfect text editor. And I know that seems like a simple thing, but it's so great, I have to use it a lot. Yeah. I even install this by default when I look, have a KDE oh, sure. system. Totally. I, I get a KDE system, and now Kate is great. You know, and there's a lot of great text no editors for, for KDE. No they're G good apps, but yeah. they're not G-edited. Yeah. And even if, even in the old days when you have a KDE system and your, your no maps looked wrong, you know, yeah. I still put up with it for G-edit. That and Pigeon. Yeah, that in the old days, yeah, that's kind of what I went with. Plus, it's got great. plugins. It's got plugins, too, and I, I, it's just Gedit is better at, like, every small rev. It gets better and better. And, yeah. and it's one of these apps, too, where because it's so good, I worry, I literally check it to make sure that they haven't made it worse when they rev it. You know, I do the same thing. Because it's so good that I don't want it to be screwed up. It's like I care. I care more about what happens to Gedit than what happens to Firefox or anything yeah. else. Oh, yeah. Like Firefox 4 comes out, yeah. and they're like, yeah. it has so many new features. I tone out immediately. I'm like, yeah. I don't care. Does it still load yeah. my stupid web yeah. browser and a stupid web page is fine? Right. Then I'm okay. Oh, man. Gedit, though. Look oh, at this. Bear they the mess it up. J Bear in the chat room's thrown down. He says, get Gmate. It's a complete set of plugins and improvements to make Gedit even more powerful for a programmer. I'll put a link to that in the show notes. Very cool. There very, you go. very cool. Gee, it's awesome. Thanks, very man. Very customizable yeah. through the plugins. Love it. All right, B-Man, let's do the news. What's new in the news this week? Oh, all right, Brian, the top story on... I got a surprise for you, Chris. Go. I don't care. Go ahead and talk. <laughs> Okay, that was random. The thing is, I'm thirsty. I know. I'm thirsty and I want to drink this soda. Okay. I'm not interested in the news because I don't care. You don't care about... I don't care because here's the thing. Brian, what about... It, uh, up, 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 up. In a few minutes, we're going to review Fedora 15. That's true. And I'm going to tell it to you like it is. You this are, is This is some news coming You really up. are just like mentally checked out of the news segment because you're ready to go to Fedora. Here's, here's the thing. <laughs> you really Those of lying. you watching, the uh, <laughs> listening to the audio version... You do not understand something. Yeah. I am not wearing a blazer. You don't today. have a jacket on. I've got a random t-shirt. I know it's a nice t-shirt. It's a great t-shirt. It's a Star Trek 40th anniversary t-shirt from also, the Space Noodle. I gotta say. Space Noodle. <laughs> Space Needle. I gotta say, it's not keen out that bad It's either. doing, it looks great. This yeah. is fan fantastic. Yeah, yeah it's really Absolutely good. phenomenal. But that, that's not what I'm talking about here. I'm saying I don't have a blazer on. Yeah, I know. I know. On purpose i always wear a blazer do you know why for a long time do you know why i wear a blazer because it shows respect oh i was gonna i was gonna say it's because of something else but i didn't want to say it on but the you end. didn't want to say it. Yeah. Well, let's go with it's respect <laughs> okay we're about to review fedora 15 not yeah. yet after the news that's true we got a whole news segment just waiting to go and i thought long and hard about this okay do i or do i not want to show fedora respect Oh, wait a minute. The answer I came to... Wait a minute. It this, turns out... Wow. ...is that I don't want to show Fedora respect. This is psychologically it, complex. It is. And I felt like no one would get it if I didn't mention it. They would just simply think Brian left his blazer at home Brian today. Brian forgot his blazer, yeah. No, Brian never forgets. And never forgets. while that's as may be... <laughs> Is that what it is? I have I have Wait. retroactively decided that it's Wait. because Brian is because psychologically Brian, somewhere deep down Brian did you forget your blazer a, a little bit <laughs> I, a little bit forgot my blazer but you see 
You know, my subconscious. You're able to. You're able to make my something subconscious out of it. Oh, means. You think maybe you left it at home? Right, right, right. Subconsciously. subconsciously this is what it. I'm saying. Like I didn't. I didn't plan it that way. Right. But right. inner down. My like my inner id. My ego. My my sub ego. Yeah. My child. It's According deep to the inside. Chat room. It was 75 episodes ago that you wore a blazer. That you, the last time you forgot your blazer. So you know what? I wonder if that's actually accurate. <laughs> it might very well hey, be. Let me tell you a little hey, bit about hey, this. Hey, Chris. The news. Let's do the news. All right. So uh, Linus came out and said, uh, by the way. Quite literally, kind of went like this, you guys. By the way, I'm thinking about bringing an end to the Linux 2.6 series and going to the 2.8 series. And I've said this kind of stuff before, but this is why I love Linus Torvalds. Uh, this is why he's, I think, the best person to be at the helm of the Linux kernel. He says, this is, by the way, a PS to a, to a nice, like, three-paragraph email. on a separate topic. Yeah, he says, PS, totally unrelated. The voices in my head also tell me that the numbers are getting too big. I may just call the thing 2.8.0, and I almost guarantee that this PS is going to result in more discussion than the rest, but when the voices tell me to do things, I listen. That's logic. Yeah, that's, that's, that's logic. That's sound. Is honestly, honestly, I've seen versions revved for far worse reasons. And come on, 2.6.57 billion or whatever yeah, at right now for high. the Linux kernel. Yeah, we're getting high. It's getting kind of goofy. Because if you look at where the Linux kernel was on 2.6.1 versus where it's at now, huge, huge. monumental improvements. Not driver you, model improvements, performance improvements, memory, massive architectural timing, improvements. Clock. I mean, I think at you could argue point. that it, yeah. it you know, feature-wise is well, well exceeded. I mean, obviously, it's not driven by features. You know, what's funny, though, pre-show, I was kind of going through this, and I was reading it, and the, and Jeremy was standing here, and he says, well, what happened to 2.7? And I was like, oh, Jay, man, you're so silly. But then I realized people might not know, but that would be, like, considered the development branch. So the, right. the way they work that is 2.6 is production, and 2.8 would be production, but 2.7 would be sort of the test. Right, and how, how they lay out their versioning. Yeah. Yeah. So I just kind of thought I'd mention that, because I know that for some of the new Linux users out there, they don't always know that. Uh, now, let's talk about a little bit of collaboration news, B-Man. Sure. Now, we like to uh, probably, as a community overall, sort of read into the drama between KDE and GNOME and canonical siding with the KDE camp and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. But the reality is is that, at the end of the day, we all are just an open source community, and it's good to see that the people actually in the important positions realize that. And uh, to that end, the Linux Desktop Summit program has been announced. Beauty. The Desktop Summit is a joint conference organized by the GNOME and KDE communities. So that's good. Awesome. And uh, right now they're having, uh, a th they're, they're attending to have a thousand international uh, participants uh, to attend. That's the expected amount. And it's going to take place August 6th through that's the 8th. That's a hell of a kegger. That is a hell of a kegger. Yeah. yeah. They're also going to have, so they're going to do the main conference. And I, what I thought was interesting is the main conference is probably going to be Probably initially nothing big, but if this really took off, you could almost see it being like the trade show aspect of this. Like, here's oh, yeah. my new app. You know, the developers go. big, yeah. But then afterwards, what they're doing is, so that's the 6th through the 8th of August, and then this 10th through the 12th, they're segmenting that off for developers. And these are coding sessions for KDE it's and awesome. GNOME guys and other GNOME. Everybody awesome. just kind of get together. Yeah. Separate it out from the rest of the event, and that's what we're going to focus on during this time. And I think that's a lot of, that makes a lot of sense. I think it's great. Anytime we can get more of, more of the people who are actually doing the work together, even if they're for Separate projects Talking is and awesome. Collaborating, and awesome. Yeah, totally. All right. Well, to move right along, because I know you want to get to that Fedora review. I want to talk about Fedora very bad. I want to give a mention to Linux Mint 11. Um, Linux Mint 11 was just released. Now, if you feel like you're a GNOME 2 refugee, then this might be your safe harbor here. Your last safe harbor. They've got uh, the new uh, Mint menu improvements, and they've also improved their package management system, as well as a nice performance boost to their update manager, and also new configuration panels. They've also got new theme on here and a bunch of polish. I know that the I just I've, I've followed the development of this particular release because uh, spoiler, but I think this is probably the one I might end up with. And I've been following it closely to sort of see yeah. where they're going with it. Really impressed by Linux it's, Mint 11. It's a good release. So go check out the. And you know what I love <laughs> is I love when you go to download Linux Mint 11. It says. Uh, if you're, uh, here's the 32-bit DVD ISO, here's the 64-bit ISO, and oh, by the way, if you're in America, it doesn't even actually come out and say that, but here's the here's the ISOs without codecs. Yeah. By default, I get the codecs, but you can choose not to. But you can elect to follow the law in your country of origin if you want to. You could if you want <laughs> That's a bonus. To, if you didn't want to do a little civil disobedience. Uh, and one last uh, plug here for another software release, because this is one of the questions we get a lot on the Linux Action Show, because B-Man... Sometimes we're a little hard on Linux video editing. Yeah. Just about every time we just, talk about just, it. Just a fair bit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so P2V, 
They uh, have a new release coming out. I think if I get my timing right, it'll be about Tuesday that we're recording this show, uh, the Tuesday after this show. And they're adding an S ton of features. This is officially oh, the version that will not kill your cat, by the way. So if you have a cat, you're safe. <laughs> Officially? Officially. <laughs> Fantastic. Uh, along with new things like audio and video effects, they have a completely redesigned project settings dialog, which is looking slick. They also, it does look a lot nicer. They also have, you know when you have a nice laid out timeline, and sometimes if you, as you start going, it gets kind of hairy to manage. It They've gets got, jerky. they got an auto zoom button. Fits that sucker right to the thing, so mm. right where you're at. Yeah, I like that. Um, and they sped it up a lot. They sped it up a lot. A new transition effects, and they've also got a new media library search thing. It's worth checking out. I would say probably consider, if you've been avoiding Linux video editing, this is the one to throw on your box and give a shot. It's worth a shot. I'm going to check it out when it's, it comes out. It's worth a shot. I have not tinkered with any of this stuff yet, but it's, uh, it's looking good. Kentucky adds video effects like adding text. Yes, Kentucky. They have the, uh, they have new text controls and things like that. So yeah. uh, They've added a ton. Honestly, there's too much to just list off. We could probably do a half-hour show on the stuff you know, they've added I, in this you know, release. I'll, I'm going to do an early hands-on, and if it if it works out well, I might do a little segment on we, it. But we really should, because yeah. this is something a lot of people need. It really is. Us and, included. And you know, in your in your Linux sucks talk that you've done about once a year over at Linux Fest, video editing is features prominently in Consistently. Yeah. Every, every year it's it's a topic yeah a big right. one there you have it b man you know what is that the news because we have stuff to talk about dude brian i want to be done with the news already that's all the news for this week thanks man oh yeah b man it is time to talk about fedora now you know you know i'm a little concerned because a I brought my fedora. Yeah. Oh. So I'm, I'm trying to show support. <clears throat> yep. I also have one, two, three beers before this segment. So That's how many beers it takes to do this segment. I had to loosen myself up to talk a little bit about Fedora 15. I'm just going to tell you, I'm, just, I'm putting it out there. Disclaimer. Okay. All right, B-Man. Why don't we start with, uh, let's talk about the history of the Linux Action Show. And, and, and where we've come down on Fedora before has not always been extremely positive. But it has in the past been extremely positive. It, yeah. Fedora Core 6, which admittedly is nine releases ago, we basically declared it as the best thing since sliced bread. And 7 was like, boy, this is good, but it's not as good as 6. It just, yeah, it's like it felt like a minor step backwards. And, and then, I have a long history running enterprise Red Hat Linux, working with Red Hat on a customer level, um, working with Red Hat on a business partnership level, and I also have a ton of respect for the, for the work that the Fedora project does. Yeah, ton of, terms, a ton of respect. I, I got to be honest, I know a lot of the people at Red Hat and involved in the Fedora project accomplish a great many things, not just on the GNOME desktop, but on the Linux kernel and many other places for many projects that are important to us. Network, The network monitor yeah. applets, I mean, the, a lot of the sound work that yep. goes on. Paul Saudi was a guy that's great. At, yep. They do a lot of great work. I don't want to confuse any of that with Fedora as a distro. Now... Uh, so, so you could have anything people, I say. You can have people working on open source projects that it, that that improve the overall Linux desktop as a whole that don't necessarily turn out a great desktop themselves. Right. Exactly. It, a, a great example would be it. It's kind of like. Let's say uh, there's an application called Ardour. Ardour is a great audio editing application, one of the best on any platforms, in my opinion. It's a phenomenal tool. Tons of power. But if the guy who makes Ardour comes out and releases a distro, that doesn't mean it's not going to yeah, suck a that's bunch. That's a great point. It could, it, it's might, it might be great to run that application, but it's not necessarily going to be the right. most amazing. It's not so, a strong suit. Ahead of time, huge respect for a lot of the work being accomplished. Yeah. But this is a review about the distro and the distro alone. I want to start with one thing. I think the biggest thing about Fedora 15 is the fact that they put their flag in the ground. And they said, we're going with GNOME 3. That's nice. And that is definitely Fedora's boldest statement. They've also done some other things that I'll touch on in a bit. But I really think GNOME 3, at least from the user's uh, point of perspective, is definitely huge. And it's just simply... Uh too bad that it's the worst GNOME 3 distribution on the entire oh, damn planet. Oh, boy, here we go. Let's go with this. So All let's right. let's start from this point okay, of view. Okay, B-Man. I came out and was fairly hard on GNOME 3. I basically said this is great work, good yeah, job team, I mean, but I don't like using it. Yeah, but I, then also you've covered ways to kind of make it a little more usable through plugins and, and stuff. 
over the last few weeks, I've actually found myself really enjoying it. I've gotten to the point now where I have a very heavily tweaked GNOME 3 yeah, desktop. Exactly. The stock, I don't care for all that much. It has all sorts of issues I don't like, but it's so configurable that right, I've gotten to the right. point now where while I think it should ship with some of the tweaks I'm using, uh, it's still, I like the fact and that it it's might. not tweakable. And those it tweaks might are GPL and whatnot. It's basically a V1 product. Yeah. And that's great. Yeah. That's great. So I've gotten yeah. to the point now where I like it. I'm running I'm running GNOME 3 on a Debian box, on an Arch box, and an OpenSUSE box. Mm -hmm. And it runs great on all of them. Yeah. All of them. It runs great on all of them. Out of the box on Fedora 15 is the worst out of the box experience with GNOME 3 I've had on any of those three districts. Really? Now, why is that? There are mul multiple reasons. One of them is before the go, simple... Before go we ahead. go too far, I just want to talk about one thing. Is you ta you called GNOME 3 a V1 product. Right. And I agree it really is a V1 product. It is. And I think the thing about that is what that does is that ends up putting this pressure on the distributor to make the rest of the desktop that so much better. Great. Because you're, you're shipping a 1.0 version of your main desktop interface. So right. every other component is leaned on so heavily to be really good. Or the, the maker of the distro, it's up to them to learn how to modify the experience yeah. and improve the experience themselves yeah. in such a way that their users would be feel comfortable so with So what it. was one of the first things that tripped you up? Uh, do we have a screenshot uh, that they're actually shipping? here not, not that one get get a window up one there we there go. we go there yeah. we go okay. go go back to the window show that on the video for those of you not not watching the video version my apologies you can see these we'll screenshots anywhere in the, yeah. in the show notes uh when we reviewed gnome 3 one of the things i pointed out was how gorgeous it is uh the themes it was cohesive from end to end everything had that dark like smoky trans semi-transparent yeah. black yeah. thing going yeah. and the the windows looked good the everything looked good yeah in Fedora 15, they've done something where they've changed the theme halfway. They've changed about half of the theme, and it looks stupid together. It's like they've, it's like they've begun branding, like a yes. Fedora branding of GNOME, but haven't quite gotten there in time for shipping. It, it, honestly, they, they basically they changed the window decorators and such, so it looks a lot like KDE 4.0 did. Uh, it looks like that oxygen look uh. that KDE 4.0 shipped with, but it not quite. It looks a little halfway. Um, it, it, the the gradients they included are strange. It looked like they're trying to mimic like uh, like OS 10 the when thing, they added the the metal windows, but not quite. There's a lot of wasted real estate here. You got to give it. You gotta, tons. Yeah. Tons of wasted real estate. It just doesn't make any sense to me. I but like they didn't the, change the like the, the like the top panel there. The top panel is still that darkness and it's still looks good. Why didn't they change that to match what they did with the windows? It's like they just didn't care that much, which it really echoes what I feel about the entire system. It feels like no one cared when they put this together. Hmm. Well, I'll tell you the kind of thing that might kind of echo your sentiment there is sure. that I noticed is the first thing I do after I get something installed that isn't working completely with my system, and what I mean by isn't working completely with my system is I mean I had a laptop, an HP MV 17-inch. I've actually covered it on like a season ago of Linux Action Show. Yep. And uh, it the couple of, a couple of things didn't work out of the box. The wireless didn't work. I never got the wireless working, actually. And uh, the brightness controls for my screen did not work. So while hitting the brightness buttons on my laptop made the animation move on it the screen... It didn't actually... So my screen, like, hmm. out of the box was, like, at 40% brightness. And you couldn't make it brighter? Literally unusable. <laughs> so I couldn't make it brighter, so I just suffered through it during the review Course. process. Um, but I was thinking maybe it's the open source Radeon driver or something like sure. that. Maybe if Could I go be. do an update, I'll get something fixed that'll make it run better, or at least maybe my wireless will get working. And, and to speak to your point about not completely caring, I, I, I scrolled down through the menu, you know, and you have a bunch of different options here, and you go through and you choose, and I got to a spot to go do the updates. And, 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 <laughs> oh, yeah, this is good. Here's the thing, Brian. <laughs> this is great. Is, this was within the first 10 minutes of using the desktop, not even yeah. that long. Yeah. There's two options, <laughs> software update <laughs> and software updates. Yeah, seriously, there's two things basically named software update. The only difference is an S at the end. And the thing is now... In the grand, they're scheme, totally different apps. In the grand scheme of an operating system, talking with the BIOS and booting and loading the core drivers and getting not the that, kernel into memory, this yeah. is not a big deal. On the grand scheme of how Linux operates as a whole, as an end user, as one of the first things in my first impressions of Fedora 15 <laughs> is that. And so you know what? <laughs> Wait, which one do you click? I rolled the dice. I went up. I went software updates. Yeah. Thinking I want multiple updates. You want so you have to you have to use that one instead of the one that just does one update apparently. And it's the software source selection. 
It's the software source. Now, why? Why? Why is that called updates? Why? And at first I thought, oh, every other distro has this figured out. Well, and because Fedora used to have this figured because out because it's called software updates and it defaults to the to the updates tab. I thought this is only for changing the sources for software updates. If I want to change the sources for my main yum repos, I must go in the regular application thing because I that wouldn't make sense to call that software updates. No, wrong. You actually also do that in software updates. Then there's software update where you actually patch. It doesn't make any sense. It, and and the thing is, is all it took was a few minutes in my on my desktop before I just scrolled in the menu and I saw that. And that's where my critique comes because there's a lot of people that should have saw that. There's a lot of people that, and I know that seems here's like a thing. stupid thing, you guys, no, here's but it's the not. Thing. Here's the thing. If people were using this as, a, as development, as alpha testing, etc., you did see this and you didn't fix it. It yeah. was an obvious, simple fix. Honestly, maybe we're crazy. The, maybe it's just us. the lazy fix would be just to name it something different. At least name them something different. Software sources. Even though, honestly, your design is ass backwards and stupid. Your whole, the whole way it's laid out is dumb. Huh, okay. However, I don't know about if that. you want to go with it, you can at least call it something different. Every other distro has the decency to name things something different. Now, it's, again, okay, I've got an idea. Why well, don't I rename deal, every application Firefox? It, yeah, yeah but, it's But put like a that. different letter on each, so it's Firefoxes and Firefox with a Z at the and, end, and, so it's, that's the leap version. The that's icon, really g -edit. Change the icon so they both kind of look like the same thing, so you can't really... It's like, it's like when you go to the men's room and the the girls room and they use a unisex icon for both of them and you're like i'm not sure which room i'm supposed to go pee in right that's how i felt about software sources right <laughs> yeah. no no no. It, no literally it's like going to the men's room and the or the men's room and the girls room in front of you yeah and they're, they're, the logo for each is simply a circle yeah after the circle on one of them is an s so circle and circles yes which one do you go into you don't know and i ended up pissing in the ladies room I could, Stupid! It was ridiculous. Man, I had a piss in the ladies' room a lot. Uh, so, so there's yeah. that. There's that. There's that polish and that touch. Um, a couple of things that I was impressed by, and let me bring up. I made sp I made sure to specifically note them down. And I'll tell you like this. I'll tell tell you like this is, there was a feature that I think, if implemented correctly, is is gangbusters. And I won't roll out rule out the possibility that it it is implemented correctly and my machine might be busted. But here's what I got. Lay it on me. So you know in GNOME 3 on the bottom part, when you log in, your notifications and stuff come up down below. Yes. Different than how uh, it was done on, um, I guess I was on Ubuntu, where they kind of had a different kind of more growl-like notification. Yeah, Ubuntu kind of had its own thing going on. Uh, so GNOME's is more like a little dialog, bo a, mod a modeless dialog box that slides up from the bottom. Right. And here's what came up about every two minutes for me. Your hard drive is failing. <laughs> Did you get this? <laughs> no. Okay, okay. I was wondering if it was just me. No, I didn't so, get that. So, again, my main... Primary... I would love to say that I had that problem, too, because, honestly, at this point, I'm pissed off at Fedora, but I did not have that my problem. My main primary rig is an HP MV17, and uh, it was getting this... I have two hard drives, an, uh, 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 an SSD and a 750-gig SATA drive, and I wasn't sure which drive it was talking about, because I've got two drives, but if you click it, it brings up a hardware drive application and it's nice but it doesn't take you immediately to the air and nothing in the application like is standing out saying this is your air and when you get something like your hard drive is failing you kind of freak out and you want to <laughs> immediately know what the f that's talking about right because Just that's a little bit that's my work machine and i gotta fix it. i kind of would like to know why yeah, ex yeah exactly so you hit the button and nothing comes up but that's fine you toggle through all your partitions all through your drives and eventually you see oh smart data says this drive is failing yeah and i thought oh crap this could That's be really bad, bad. That's super so, bad. but it's a nice tool it has check your drive check your sectors you click that ask for your administrator password and then it fails right okay fine so i reboot into steve gibson's grc spin right and i scan my drive because i honestly am worried about my drive failing right i would be now if you're not familiar with spin right i'm told it's one hell of a diagnostic tool and if spin right says your drive is healthy there's a good chance your drive is healthy right so I ran Spinrite on my computer for 25 hours. That got it to about 70% complete. Not quite. And it did not find a single error. Now, Spinrite comes back and says, you're clean. I go back into Fedora. I immediately start getting error messages saying, smart data says your drive is not doing well. Your drive is failing. And it says it's bad sectors according to smart data. Now, I don't know what to believe here. I tell you, Brian, I rebooted into Windows 7. I don't get any errors. I went into Ubuntu. I don't get any errors. I ran Spinrite. I don't get any errors. But under Fedora 15, I get a, pro a, po a pop-up every few minutes telling me my drive is failing. So what you're saying is Fedora is so broken, well, it caused you to... Be afraid and scared through FUD into wasting an entire day. 
It, it uh, yeah. So Fedora caused you to lose so much productivity well, that mean, your machine was out of commission for a day. I didn't think of it like that. I mean, I did run for. That's what it is. This is the basic. It is an operating system. Hey, you remember back when Microsoft released DOS? And you know what sucked is my it machine. It was a disk operating system because it was hitting the drive so hard. It's a disk. My machine was running hot enough that like the machine ran hot, like with the fans going, and I, I ran it for a long maybe time. Maybe what Fedora was trying <laughs> I was to really say. Worried. Maybe what Fedora was trying to say was Fedora is about to. Hurt your drive. Now, Mini you Nessie should probably Mini, reboot. Mini Nessie in the chat room doesn't think I was running the final, but I guarantee you, I was running the final build of Fedora. Yeah. If yeah, I've been running the final. If it's right, that's a fantastic service, and I think I I think it should be built into every desktop to warn you when you're when the smart data. But it's on hitting your issues. Yeah. It, it, so. I, I guess the reason why I didn't look at it as a loss of productivity is because even it if it's not right. right now, in the future, one day it probably will be right, and I will be very thankful it's there. But what if it just keeps innocuously well, saying it's like crying wolf? Dude, so Fedora basically cries thing. wolf about data. So then, it, then the error message becomes completely. That's pointless. where I'm at. So now it's just noise. Now it's, it's just noise. noise. And, and honestly, already I've never had that. Now that I've heard you've had that, I'm going to ignore it when it pops up on mine because right? I will assume it's just Fedora being and, ass backwards. And if again. I get it on another machine, I'm immediately going to start ignoring it. Right. This is the thing. This is the problem. This this sort of crap causes more damage to Linux than anything else, than any random bull malarkey that hmm. Steve Ballmer spews out of his mouth about, 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 oh my gosh, Linux has intellectual property issues. This, that's not that big a deal, because we can all look through that, and everyone's like, uh, yeah, 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 guy from another company says you shouldn't use a competitor's product, whatever. But when our own, when our own, that's supposed to be our flagship, releases stuff that works so badly, uh, come on. Excel, Excel or it whatever. It causes so much damage. Excel picker or whatever. I mean, really, Brian, you should see this chat name. I, I can't even. I, I, I can't. Excel picker. Elixir picker. Elixir picker. Uh, he asked if it's an SSD. And, and, and I thought, I initially I thought, it must be complaining about my SSD drive. It's new something. Sure. No, actually, Fedora, solid with the SSD. Totally had no problem with the SSD. It was the standard SATA drive it was complaining about. So now, uh, so that that's, that sucks a whole bunch. Um, now, I want to say one thing that worked really well. All right. I was able to install it this time. Yeah. The last three releases of Fedora, the installer through the live was CD really the, oh, repeatedly yeah. crashed yeah. so many times yeah. that it was difficult for me to even get it running yeah. on multiple machines, including VMware and VirtualBox. I, this time, I had no crashes during the installer. The installation process worked just fine. I had That's one the one problem. thing I can say. Okay I had about one it. problem with the installer, and it's just a minor critique. Is I, I thought maybe, because you know we can do these visuals behind us where we can show stuff, and I like to sometimes show different stuff, and I wanted to be able to show uh, Fedora. Door 15 behind us, so I thought I'd load it in a virtual box image for this computer where we run the visuals from. Uh, when you go into VirtualBox, now VirtualBox supports 3D acceleration, but yeah. not until you have the additions installed. Right. So when you boot off the live CD, it's a 2D environment, and GNOME 3 fails to start. GNOME 3 requires acceleration. Right, so it falls back. So you fall back to a GNOME 2. Now, I honestly only spend a couple of minutes in here, so don't take this with a grain of salt, but I didn't see a way to directly install GNOME, or I did directly install Fedora, and the reason I stopped is because I wasn't sure at that point if I would get GNOME 2 or if I would get GNOME 3. And it wasn't made clear to me, so it's I just not made bailed. Clear. Yeah. Uh, so I did have one. That was the only problem I had with the installer, but other than that, it worked really good for me. Yeah, I, my, the installer, it worked fine. Uh, I, I didn't mind it. I, I got through that process, and yeah, I did notice that basically you end up installing a different environment that you have with the live CD, but whatever. You know, I mean... <sighs> At a certain point, you end up using a distro like this where there are countless issues, like the one Chris mentioned with, with, with software update or yeah. software updates, little things like that, just, that just keep hitting you over the head over and over again, and you just stop caring. There were two things that jumped out at me. Is Fedora has implemented a system now where when applications launch, they do a pretty good job of identifying missing packages on the system. So I wanted to check out the new virtualization manager stuff that Fedora is doing. Yeah. That's really one of Fedora's strong suits. It is. And so I, I went into the add remove programs and I installed the virtual machine manager, the vert manager, and uh, it, it, it picked up some dependencies and said, okay, I got these depths. Would you like to install? I said, yes. After it's done installing, it comes up with a new prompt that says, hey, would you like to run this? Yeah, actually, I would. Thanks for asking. So, because sometimes, you know, you got to go find it. It's kind of a pain in the butt because you don't know what it's necessarily called in the menu or what its icon is. Sure. So, ask me? Yeah, I love that. So, I say yes. So, when I fire it up, it comes up and says, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Before you go on, you need to install more packages. Oh, okay. Well, I don't know why you didn't get those when I selected you in the first place, but I don't mind. As long as sure. you, as long as, as, long as, long as, as it finds them and gets them, yeah. As long as you're telling me you need packages instead of just crashing, I'm a happy camper, right? Sure. So, goes and gets those packages, installs them. It's about 20 packages. 
Wow. Okay, but you know, virtualization is a serious gig. I'll yeah, take it could it. take a lot of packages. Surprised that it was installed, missing 20 packages, but I'll take it. So it gets done installing, and that's all good. And I really liked that. And yeah. I thought, wow, that that's slick. You know, really no reason not to tie that repo in a little tighter to the OS. Here's where it failed me, though. I went over to, uh, I don't know, YouTube or something to go watch a video. And, of course, Flash isn't installed by default. Totally sure. expected that. Got the link, downloaded it from Adobe, installed it. Downloaded the, they even on Adobe's website, they had a yum version, not an RPM version, but a yum, yum version. version. Yep. So I selected that and I Grab downloaded it. Yeah. And I run that installer, installs great. I watch my YouTube video, sweet. Again, the J Man was out here before the show. I was like, hey, J Man, check out this video. I want to show you this thing about Fedora 15 I was doing. I go to show him the video, says, I need Flash. What? I just did Flash. All right, so I click the thing. I download Flash. I choose the Yum version. I'm saying, I'm saying seriously, Jay, man. I swear, I, you stand right here. I was like, I swear, I just, I just did this. I, I don't know why. It's not, you know, I'm all embarrassed. I'm trying to show my Fedora 15 desktop, and the video yep. won't play. And he's a Windows user. And he's like, you can't, you, you can't play videos YouTube? on YouTube. You can't, you can't go to YouTube. I'm like, no, no, but I'll get it and fix it in a second. I'm frantically clicking. I say install a Yum version. Download. Go to install. It says, sorry, you already have the software installed. Yum comes up. Says, can't install it. It's already installed in your system. Yep. So I've got one window telling me. Flash is not installed. I got another window telling me Flash needs to be installed. Is installed? Is installed. Which one do I go with here? So I do about plugins. I don't have Flash installed. Okay. Yeah. So what did I do earlier when I downloaded Flash, installed it, and then watched the, uh, one single YouTube video? How did that work? All yep. right, fine. That's cool. That's cool. So then I go over. But what I did notice when I went to about plugins is that I had QuickTime, I had VLC, all this kind of stuff. I'm like, well, shoot. All right. That's going to be great. So I went over to apple.com slash trailers. Figured I might not have Flash, but I bet wouldn't that be ironic, or ironic if I could watch QuickTime videos? Yeah, it'd be tons of fun. Ha, ha, ha. Silly fedora. So I go over there. The video players load, but no video, no video starts. Right. Pop-up screen comes up. Hey, you need the MPEG-4 AAC codex. Easy enough. Click install. Dialog box comes up. You already have these installed. What? And then the loop continues. It was yep. like this for everything. So it's almost there, but it's not quite there. Just like the software update stuff in the menu system is almost there, but it's not quite there. It's almost like they didn't care. That's kind of what I come back to on I, this one. It I, feels like nobody in the Fedora project cared. I think they would probably take offense to that characterization. I don't think it's that. I think that's what it looks like. What I think it is is they don't care to the extent where they honestly, without a shadow of a doubt, in their minds, believe in the ship it, and that fixes it. So they figure, if we only get something to 80%, it's better to ship at 80 than not to ship. Maybe. I mean, m maybe you And that comes across that. as not caring about polish, and I think that's what it is. And unfortunately, that's what I think a lot of users see it as, and I think that's just something they don't quite recognize internally. Based on our conversations, I don't think they actually, I think they believe that when standard users are downloading their distribution, they don't realize that they might not be getting a product that is absolutely 100%. I mean, the fact that they're willing to ship something that says, well, we don't, uh, we don't consider upgrades not working a, a, a show-stopping feature. We don't consider that. We don't consider the fact that you can't upgrade from one release to the next not to be a feature that we would actually try to fix. You want? We'll like, take a good shot at it, though. And you know what? If we don't get it in 15, I guarantee you, we'll probably great chance we're going to get it in 16. And when we get it in 16, it's probably going to be awesome. You know what? <clears throat> you want a conspiracy theory time? All right. I'd say it's on purpose. I'd say it's on purpose because Fedora makes all of, or Red Hat makes their money on software support. If the software is more buggy, they get more money in support. Fedora is the basis for Red Hat, both in the desktop and the server. Therefore, you make it usable technically, but harder See, than hell to get working. I disagree because, because... And you make more money in support. They've got OpenSUSE, they've got Mandriva, they've got Arch, and they've got Ubuntu sniffing up their butts all the time, improving on all, all of the things they get wrong. This is why I think that they're going to be wrong. They're going to eventually fail because of this. But right now, I mean... I think it's different. And I think what, yeah, I, what, what I'm worried is it's even worse. Is What I'm worried it is is that it is an intentional indifference to the desktop community. That... The desktop community as seen as a lever to propping up their enterprise distribution. And to the extent that if that means introducing things that are not ready yet in order to get their massive base of public beta testers to bang on their stuff before they put it in their main enterprise distro, then that's all the better for them. And if it makes desktop Linux look a little less complete, a little less mature, a little less competitive, and a little less polished, then that's okay because really what they're trying to sell is those multi-thousand dollar server licenses and they don't give a crap about what it makes the desktop look like. And the only thing 
thing I can come away at this is if you just look at what they've shipped now for four or five releases in a row, we've sat at behind these microphones and said, this is not ready, this should not have shipped. I mean, we've literally had a review where the volume applet did not work. <laughs> Both of them. I mean, that's literally where we're at with this. And I just have to simply believe it is in a total indifference to the desktop experience beyond what the developers themselves, who personally are passionate about Fedora, want to see accomplished. You know, and that is right. the only source of desktop polish we get is the committed and smart individuals at the Fedora project themselves. Because Red Hat as a company, I believe, could give two craps about the desktop. You know, you know and what? if they did, you are right. they would fire right. the efforts that are in charge of this project. If they cared, these people would not have jobs. You're right. You know, you're right. You're right. You're right. My, uh, my, I'm all worked my, up, right? My, my conspiracy theory, you know what? I, I'd love to assume a conspiracy theory. Come on. Conspiracy theories are You fun. could be right, too. But I don't, I don't think I'm. I think you're right on this one. And here's, here's where I'm at. It has been so many years since Fedora Core 6. Yeah. Fedora has been going downhill fast. Fedora is losing market share. Personally, I don't want to review another one. I, I don't. I don't think there's any point. I know we just get on here and we get negative. Well, but it's not just that. I feel like us reviewing Fedora honestly is damaging to the Linux community because we're coming out here and we're saying we're telling it like it is. We're not championing Regardless, the line. We're not I championing know. the line. And we're we just saying so this is the crap. quality. We, we take so much crap for that. We really do. And honestly. It hurts Linux in general. And at this point, I think I feel that Fedora is now relegated to that creepy little kid in the corner who we just don't want to talk about anymore. Fedora is going to become, and I do not, I don't mean to downplay a Slackware or, 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 or anything like that, but Fedora is going to become the Slackware of the new generation of distros. Not huh. that Slackware is, it, that's not, I don't no, mean. No, Slackware is great. But Slackware was always considered like the hardcore thing. Like, yeah. Like years ago, like if you went Slackware, you were going hardcore. You were hardcore. You, right? might, you were either doing Linux from scratch or Slackware. You did and, one of the two. And, 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 yeah. and I just think like, I think like what it is, is Fedora is okay with having savvy Linux desktop users who are comfortable with going in cat proc video and proccing the brightness and catting the brightness setting and may, maybe echoing yeah. a new number to make that's their fine. screen bright. I think that's who Fedora is targeting. I think Fedora thinks that if my screen isn't bright enough, I should just echo a new number into that file and my screen will be brighter. Right. And that's, what's the problem? What's the problem with that? And to me, I think, are you effing kidding me? Yeah, are you ridiculous? If, if that was your stated goal, because honestly, if you look through... Fedora's website. I like website. Slackware. I like Slackware. Chat rooms give me a hard if time. You look, I like if Slackware. you look through Fedora, the fedoraproject.org and you go through their features and their screenshots and you go through it, they talk about great entertainment values. You can watch cool, cool videos and music and it's super easy. Yeah. They present it as if it's an easy to use desktop environment. Out of the box, ready for multimedia. With all the other desktop environments out there. Right. That's how they present it. So that's what we have to go with. Now, case in point. If you go to the website here, look at these screenshots for a second here. That's not what it looks like. That's not Fedora 15. Well, that could just be they haven't gotten a chance to update it yet. Seriously, though, you don't release a product, a huge distro that you don't release that often and not even think, I'm going to update a screenshot. You don't do that. You don't do that. No other distro does that. I mean, sure, if you go to maybe on Ubuntu launch day, if you look around enough on the website, you can find screenshots of the old version. I don't but, know. Actually, but, they're pretty good about but it. But the front page is always going to be the new stuff. Yeah. The features page, that's going to be the new stuff. Yeah. They did not update this. These are not GNOME 3 new UI. No, These are, are the old, old Fedora 14 weird Windows 2000 looking screenshots. Blisk says that's like Fedora like... Uh, <laughs> like way old. I'm not gonna say how old he says it is, but it, seriously, it's, it it's old. Really old. Yeah. That's really old. So this is so this is the thing. You Looking gotta spend your here, resources where you can, I guess. I mean. And if you look around, how do you find out what's new? This is just another little tidbit of they just didn't care. When if you go to Fedora 14 dot or fedoraproject.org, yeah, where do you learn about what's new? Well, you can't. What you gotta do is do a quick little search for Fedora 15 yeah, feature list. And it's a wiki page, and you find a wiki lay with a table. With a table, not really sorted by any particular order, and most of it is not 
is not detailed enough to give you any information. Case in point, Design Suite Group. Group of design-related software for easy installation. What the hell does that mean? <laughs> you don't even know what that means. No, I know. You click on it, and you, you get like this thing about, oh, they have a contingency plan, and oh, here's who owns it. No other information. Literally, no other information. What are we doing here? This, is, this seems like a project that is poorly organized or not organized at all, despite the fact that they I, use a wiki. You know wiki. what it seems like? It seems like a Ridiculous. project. It seems like a project that is drastically underfunded. And it seems like a project that is drastically underfunded by one of the richest Linux companies in I, the I've business. seen better polished high school projects. Dude. Way better. Way Lin better. Linux Mint literally runs off contributions from the community, and their page is much more polished. They do a much better job featuring their uh, their highlights. Screenshots are on the top of the post about the new release. There's a screenshot featured right on their Toss page. Toss me over here. All the different versions. And if I go into, like, oh, the new version is released. Oh, I do want to read more about this new version. Oh, it's going a little slow right now because it's here. Oh, new features screenshot. at a glance in order of importance with details. Links to additional information about them. Them. Yes, and then here's where you can download them. The reason is, is because uh, Linux Mint actually genuinely cares about the presentation and communicating that information to desktop users. Right, um, and 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 that is done. You got to imagine. You have to figure the Linux Mint project has significantly less resources than the Fedora project. Sig crazy amounts of less resources. So it's just a crazy. matter. It's just a matter of communication. And and another thing that kind of goes along is is Fedora's target audience is an audience who communicates primarily through wikis. They don't communicate through blogs and through tweets and through all these other methods that desktop users today are going to. And you know what? That's fine. That totally really is. okay. And you know what? Honestly, Brian, what that's going to do is that's going to result in Fedora never really moving beyond their current market space. They're just going to continue to organically grow slowly like they have. And you know what? Honestly, Brian, after using Fedora 15, I think that's a good thing. I don't think we need them bringing in more users because honestly, overall, I think that would do worse for the Linux. Unfortunately, it's almost like you have to let Fedora do these things so that way all the other distros can get better and take the cool stuff that they do and let Fedora not market properly, let Fedora not communicate properly, that way we don't run the risk of people actually finding them and using them. That's kind of how I'm feeling. I'm feeling like, honestly, we shouldn't talk about them anymore. I'm feeling like it's, they're so, it, it's at a stage where it's such, such a negative impact on us. Not, I mean, come on, how many of our viewers are going to watch it? Not that, are going to use uh, this. Not that many. Well, how much crap are we going to get for even saying this stuff? But it's the truth, and I think if people think about it objectively, you'll, you'll see this stuff the same way. And I'll give you an example of why I'm so torn on this issue. Is, uh, dude, dude, the Fedora marketing list is going to go crazy nuts over this. Well, and it's, it's, it's a total misrepresentation of our feelings about the project and the people, but it's just the end result. I mean, I'll give you an example of where Fedora rocks it. Is Fedora is one of the first people out there to ship by default with System D, their new system uh, and service oh, yeah. manager. That is a positive and it's a great way to you parallel you parallel startup services and you can check for dependencies and, and there have been things like this before but this is a really high quality system startup and open is talking great. about using i wouldn't be yes. surprised to see other distros switch to this they've got some they've done they've taken some, they've taken some special precautions to keep compatibility with with sysv and i i'm really impressed with system d and this is an example of where fedora moves things forward for everyone and if you want to try this stuff right now, this is a great way to do it. Or, or if you're already the people that I think the market for Fedora is, you'd already be using Arch and you'd already have this. That's what I keep coming back to. I'm like, why? Here's the thing. I love the work they're doing. Yeah, yeah. So why not have them on Arch? I think we've said that in the last Fedora review. I'm like, I don't understand why Fedora is Fedora. I don't understand why it exists at this point. I understand that Red Hat wants to base you know, their distro on something, so they encourage Fedora to exist. That's a benefit to them. But why don't they base their suite on OpenSUSE right? or Arch or some other distro that is working better, more polished, and honestly more advanced in most ways? I don't understand why you would choose Fedora. To me, that's just making a bad business decision. Now, and, and technologically, if you want a really great development machine, you would not choose Fedora. That, I mean, if you were being really objective, you would not choose Fedora. 
no way would you choose Fedora. Nobody as a developer would use Fedora. OpenSUSE, sure. There's a great suite of tools yeah. around OpenSUSE to allow uh, distribution of software and building great virtual machines and all these sorts of things. Arch. Arch is always up to date. It's the most bleeding edge distro there is. Take the power in your hands with Arch. Why not go with one of those? There's more options. But the thing is, Fedora is touted as power user, bleeding edge, etc. But they're not. They're not the most bleeding edge. They're not the most power user friendly. Well, they can be Arch bleeding edge. Arch is much better. Arch Gen be. 2 Gen is yeah. much better yeah, in that way. True. And yet, both, I find, provide a more polished experience. I would say the difference with Fedora is they're more, they're more bleeding edge in terms of the likely direction the industry will move as a technology. With KVM, with the virtualization stuff, now with System D, a Pulse Audio, um, and you know, uh, all of these things are are tech, techno technological direction shifts for Linux. Yeah. And the, the the thing about Arch is Arch System D is an option, right? But the one of many. Yeah. And whereas Fedora is like they're going with this one, they're going to take a stab at actually making it integrated with the system. Get it working here because it's going to just go everywhere eventually. And I just, I don't know, I guess that's where Fedora is at for me personally. And I think for the, for, for you out there, I don't know, if, if, you guys, if you guys think we're way off base, we want to hear from you. But try to take what we're saying and remove the emotional attachment to it and try to look. We're looking at it objectively. We're looking at it in a way where we think a lot of people coming to Linux, a lot of people that are maybe not developers, a lot of people that are not ex ex open source enthusiasts, all the, you know, people who are where they don't know it should be called GNU Linux. They just know about Linux. You guys are losing them on this stuff, and you guys are giving them the wrong impression about the desktop. And seriously, and this is just a purely personal side of things, you guys make me look like a turd burglar. I make my name gets end up tied with Linux. Like, you just start searching for my name, and 90% of all the results have the word Linux in the first three words. People come up to me who don't run Linux asking what they should run or have their horror stories about, oh, my company wanted to go to Linux and we so we downloaded, we, we tried to use Red Hat or we tried to use Fedora and and then all I get to hear about is how it didn't work. I hate it when people still turn, man. And it, it, it sucks because I know that had they gone with any number uh. of 20 or 30 other distros, things would have been easier for them. And that makes me look bad. It makes me look like I'm championing a broken platform when it's I the know. farthest thing from the truth. Linux is ready. It's been ready. It's it's shipping. It's viable. It's productive. It's stable. It's awesome. And we all know that. It's not a matter of, oh, well, the Linux desktop year happened this year. No, no, no. It happened years ago. Linux desktop is great and used by millions and millions of people worldwide. It's phenomenal. But you know what people are running away from? Fedora. Fedora's market share has been tanking. If you if you go to my blog, linduke.com, and you search around for uh, for the Linux sucks talk, if you look in the Linux sucks talk, mind the fact that the audio is bad, but if you scroll oh, yeah. around in there a little bit, you'll find a chart that actually is market share chart, and it basically is this line going... <laughs> And basically, Fedora is crashing for the first time ever. Fedora's market share is really about the same as that as, as OpenSUSE, which isn't to say anything bad about OpenSUSE, because OpenSUSE has been about 10% market share for like a decade or more. But Fedora was once the king. Well, yeah, you know, I'll say And this. now they're diving faster than anything. I think I'll try to wrap up my take on, on, the review, on Fedora 15 uh, like this. I would say... If you run Red Hat Enterprise Linux and you plan to keep your Red Hat Enterprise Linux systems current with whatever the next version is, sure. and um, you are a KVM, uh, the, the the virtualization, not the not the keyboard and mouse switcher. If you are a KVM person who's trying to learn it, maybe you have uh, an implementation at work that you want to master. Um, uh, you know, uh, there's there's things in Fedora that are probably speaking directly to you, and you are their target audience. Probably. Uh, otherwise, if you want to use the desktop as a desktop user, I would probably consider not going with Fedora. If I, or go with Fedora, but head over to the Fedora Spins site and find a spin of Fedora that may be a little yes. more tweaked. Yes. It yeah. needs tweaking. It needs love before it's before it's usable for you. And that's just all there is to it. And I want to say this <laughs> again. Check this out. Nighthawk in the chat room says he just got the hard drive failing thing. Ha, nice. It, it happens, uh, apparently. So I want to be clear about this. The work that is being done by many members of the Fedora team and at Red Hat is both vital and interesting and worthwhile fedora as a distro i have to give a big fat incomplete or an f it incomplete. is terrible I, I i incomplete is a good way to put it isn't it oh and like night, i'll turn it into an f if they don't fix it fast nighthawk says it's a brand new hard drive 
Right. So, but if we're wrong, if we're coming at this from the absolute wrong way, if we did something aw- like awful, like we clicked the make it crappy button right well, when you possible. clicked install, it's possible. Probably shouldn't put that button in there, though. Probably not. Uh, tell us. We really do want to know if we're doing this wrong. But after we've reviewed so many versions of this with so many problems, some the same, some different, it's kind of hard to believe that. Yeah, and We you know would like what? to hear I, about it, and we would like to hear about it in public, please. I know a lot of you guys are going to email yeah, me. Yeah. I am not going to respond to all of you. I will try my it's best. Too many. But there's too many of the people out there that are going to be really hating on us about this review. Probably go, Jupiter Colony. Go to Jupiter Colony. Yeah. I know, I know, I know. It's our forum, and you don't want to be there giving love to Fedora haters, whatever. Go to JupiterColony.com and talk about it. Talk about why Actually, we're there's, wrong. There's some Fedora lovers in that Jupiter Colony. There are. And here's the thing. I don't I don't want to knock them for loving it. I really don't. Because honestly, once you once you get to I use DOS. Hey man, whatever fits your needs. I use DOS for a lot of years. Sure. I got to the point where I was so used to it. You were a power I user. Loved it. Yeah, yeah. Now, down. is it a great system? No. No, it's not. Come on. It, looking back on it, was there was there any number of other systems I'd rather have been using? Yeah, oh yes, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But MS DOS. I ran MS DOS five, which was sure, awful sure. for years. <laughs> I ran MS DOS five for the years. The awkward period. It yeah. was it was terrible. Yeah, it was. But I ran it and and I enjoyed it. And when I moved off of it, it was kind of painful. And I even defended it. People were like, "Why are you Why are you running MS DOS five? That's funny." And then they it, and, and they had a point. It was awful. It but really I still just comes down it. to if Fedora does what you need it to do, then go for it. I happen to be of the opinion I think for it doesn't do it anymore. The majority of what people need it doesn't. But there are a select set of users that will. If hell, if you want to install a bunch of RPM packages, reuse OpenSUSE. There you go. I mean, come on. It's a well it's a well supported thing. Yeah. Anything else? If if you if you if you think you should be running Red Hat or Fedora, you don't. Run OpenSUSE. If you if you're not sure if you should use Red Hat or not, don't run anything else. Oh, all right. That's my official review. There you go, B Man. That's the Linux Action Show's look at Fedora fifteen. Thankfully, that brings us to the end of this way too fedora heavy. Yeah, it was a little ed- rough. Huh? It was a looks action show. Yeah. Uh, I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Uh, if you're uh, if you're just you're like, man, there's so much negativity. Come back next week. Yeah. Lots of positive stuff going yes. on. We're gonna do a very, very, very quick review of Linux Mint 11. Just a kind of a quickie. Mm-hmm. You know, just a little, little quickie. A little bit like here. Here's what we think hey, about man, it. It's the next thing we're both jumping over. Uh, to. We're both gonna be play, using it for a little bit this week. Uh, we're also gonna be having part two of our big uh, building your own cloud series yeah. that we started last week, uh, which should be pretty exciting. A lot of good responses to that one, so I'm, I'm looking forward. And to I've that. gotten a lot of great suggestions about things we can run on the server and. And it's I gonna, know some of the things you've been doing on the background. I know somebody was uploading the uh, iOS. I'm just saying. I've been having fun. I've been having fun. <laughs> uh, so, so been having a lot of fun. Been having a good time. Uh, now we're gonna have to go over a lot of the cool new features that you can you can you can replace Google oh. services with next sure, week. Yeah, yeah. I'd originally thought, you know what? Well, next week for part two, we'll just be mostly going over like what I finally settled on. Yeah, yeah. But I've gotten so many suggestions that are really cool. Really, stuff that I'm not gonna be using, but, but still I people think might want to know about. Are way cool. That was the number one thing. Is like people were like, "Hey, these are tools I'd never heard of." Like exactly, DuckDuckGo. DuckDuckGo is great, and OwnCloud was another popular one. And so we got a, we got even more. Like on replacing your Dropbox, I got cool. been flooded with replacements of ways you can replace Dropbox that work very differently. Dude. Some that work the same. It's been great. So tune in next week. We'll go over all nice. these features. It nice. should be really really cool. The uh, one that I was just tipped off to on the last episode of TechSnap. Check out TechSnap, our new show. Uh, was Woola or something? W U U L A, and the thing that they, their claim to fame is 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 encryption on the local side first. So the your machine encrypts it everything encrypts it locally before it yeah, posts it back up. That I like. The way cool. That's way better. Way cool. Yeah. Lots of really cool stuff. You know, services that you can use FTP sites and SSH Ooh, for your backup. Yeah. All sorts Ooh. of great stuff. So again. Next week, we'll be going over all of that. Yeah. If you have any thoughts on today's episode or any additional suggestions you want to get in next week's cloud episode, head on over to jupitercolony.com. That's the forum. Yeah. Go to the Linux Action Show forum. Just plaster it somewhere in there. There's going to be forums started up. You can, you can throw it in there. It's yeah. not create a new one. Whatever. Don't yeah. care. Just do it. And we'll be li- we should be, unless, uh, unless something comes up, we'll be live at our regular time over at jblive.tv at 10 a.m. Pacific. Correct. Yeah. Correct. You can join us and get your thoughts right there in the chat room. And then there's Twitter, Brian Lando, Chris LAS, good stuff all the, all the time. There you have it. All the time, all the time, good stuff. All right, everyone. Unrelated note. Oh. If you're like, man, all this hating on Fedora is getting me tired. Yeah. I want to hate on a piece of technology that uh, we can all rally against in unison. 
Uh, head on over to my blog over at lunduke.com. I've got a series going called... Uh, uh, Apple didn't invent the dock or something like that? Yeah, well, hold on, hold on. I can't even remember what I called it. You got a, you got a hot oh, tab on lunduke.com. Um, things Apple Stole. Yeah. Uh, so the first episode, the first the first things in the Apple series stole. is The Dock, <laughs> part one. That's not Beatty at all, man. So, so we're just calling it <laughs> Things Apple Stole. Uh, oh, man. So if you if you want to just hate on Apple randomly, no, uh, feel I free bet to that's why you wear your blazer. It probably got flamed in the flame war. Yeah, the flame all war. my blazers are burned alive now. Yeah, I bet. <laughs> It's funny because they were made purely out of arsenic so you'd have thought but no <laughs> all right everyone well thanks so much for tuning into this week's episode of the linux action show and we'll see you next sunday I tell you what I what I'm thinking, even if it's the wrong thing to do. Like if that's like the worst idea possible, I still tell it. So the good news is I recorded all. Oh of my it. god! The stinky bird. That's disgusting. Well, here's the thing, man. I had Ugh. I had tuna melts. I've had tuna melts. For, oh boy! Oh boy! That is bad. I had tuna melts Jeez. for dinner, and then I just pounded two beers back to back. So yeah, yeah. Ah. I got stinky burps.